This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Quick little video for your Friday here on wire splicing. The technique I'm going to show you is known as a Western Union splice. I've also heard it called a NASA splice, but I have a hard time believing they splice wires at NASA. I'm pretty sure they just replaced them. So I'm going to start off with a couple pieces of thicker wire, and it doesn't matter what size the wire is. This is like 18 gauge. Maybe 16, somewhere in there. And let's get it stripped. And you want to strip probably about three quarter inches off of each piece of wire. Okay? So that our, t our total length of bare wire is somewhere around inch and a half. Oh boy, what's that in millimeters? My brain doesn't do automatic calculations. So, inch and a half, somewhere around 40 millimeters. I'm sorry, my, my entire career working in electronics and everything, obviously everything's done in SI units, millimeters, centimeters, kilograms, milligrams. But when it comes to what I call real things, just... I am a product of my education and my environment. I think in inches. Can't help it. Okay. So, we have our two pieces of wire stripped. And they are twisted. You don't want to try and twist up stranded wire that hasn't been twisted together you'll just end up with a mess and you also want to make sure that you don't have any little tiny pieces of wire hanging out what we might call a careless whisker because those can uh, create a short real fast now i'm using two little chunks of wire here so it's not important but you know if you didn't have access to the other end of your wires what is important now is putting on a piece of shrink wrap if you don't do it now, you're never going to get another opportunity. I mean, I will, but that's too small. Because uh, the ends of mine aren't all fished up together. So, yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> the next thing you want to do is you just kind of want to cross them about like this. So, we are at the crossing. Then grip it however you want. It doesn't matter what direction you start. And then wrap one end tightly around this wire. The other end you're going to want to wrap tightly around this wire. And when you're done, you should have a nice spiral wrap. Like so. Now, here's a technique. Can we get it to focus on this? That's yeah, not bad. All right, I've got my soldering iron here. Let me clean off the tip. And we need some solder. What I'm going to do is just apply a tiny bit of solder to the tip of the iron. To help the thermal transfer and now i'm going to bring the iron up and put a little pressure on the wire give it a few seconds to, for the heat to build up then i'm going to fill it feed in the solder and it is not conducting it there we go are we starting there come on I don't know what is up with this soldering iron. I turn the heat up just a little bit. I'm going to clean off my iron. And if you have problems like this, if you have problems with things that don't want to adhere, flux is your friend. That's what flux is for. In this case, I'm going to use 
some ruby fluid, which is a, a caustic flux. You want to be careful with it. You want to make sure you, you clean it off when you're done. Again, we're starting with a clean tip. We're going to apply solder to the tip to tin the tip of our iron. So we're going to bring it in here like so. This is being incredibly stubborn. There we go. Now we're finally we're finally moving. So I'm moving the soldering iron and the solder together down the length of the wire. But the solder is not touching the soldering iron, you see. It is touching the opposite side of the wire. You want to make sure... That the wire is completely covered. Those little color spots you see there, that is the flux. All right, so now we have a strong electrical and a mechanical joint. You gonna focus? Come on. And now we have a strong electrical and mechanical joint. And then all our last step is, is to bring our heat shrink up. Remember, you should have slid it on beforehand. And we want to make sure we put the splice kind of right about in the middle there. And make sure that we are covering, you know, both both ends of the uh, the insulation on the wire. Now, a hot air gun is a preferred method. I don't have one handy here. Mine are all put away. So I'm just going to use a little torch lighter. And the trick is keep it moving, never stop moving. That's how you end up burning things when you stop moving. And there you have an acceptable Western Union splice. But there are other ways to join your wires together. At the beginning of this video, I said this video was sponsored by Solder Stick. They have another method for doing this where the solder is contained inside a little pocket here. You heat it up, the solder melts, it insulates and joins your wire at one time. There's a little video all about that you can watch here in just a couple seconds. But if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons who watch and make these videos possible. Big thanks to Solder Stick for sponsoring the video. And a big thanks to you right there for watching it. Because if you weren't watching them, I wouldn't be making them. All right, that's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation. waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits spade connector kits which if you work on cars or boats you know how useful they will be and the same goes for ring connectors when you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt this is simply the way to do it solder stick remember them for all of your wire connection needs there's a link down below for a discount